What's up, guys? This is Derek with ESFIWorld.com, and we are sitting here with the one and only Destiny. Steven, how are you doing today? Pretty good. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. So uh, let's just jump right into MLG. So you were in the open bracket. Um, let's just talk about MLG in general. So do you prepare for an event with such a huge bracket like MLG where it's pretty much random um, differently than you would compare, prepare for a tournament where you have a small group of uh, players and you kind of know who you're going to get? Um, you probably should. Um, I've been really busy this past month, so my preparation hasn't been the greatest. But um, for an event like this, you can't really just prepare. You have to be like an all-around solid player. Um, the open bracket is so random. You could run into so many different people. You can't just have one or two strategies ready for a certain group of people. You just have to be an all-around solid player, I think. All right. Um, so speaking about the open bracket, your bracket was pretty much ridiculous. Um, you had artists uh, in re winners round two, which uh, you lost to him. Yeah. And then also in your bracket, you had Stefano, White Raw, players like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually, you uh, you fell to Titan in uh, in I think it was round five of the loser bracket. I think so. Yeah. Um, so when you get to an event and you see you have that kind of bracket in front of you, um, how do you really approach it? Do you do you do anything differently, or do you kind of try to um, adjust to it at all? Um, you just play your games the best you can. Um, there's nothing else you really can do. I don't think. Okay. Do you have any kind of prepared builds whenever you run into a player that you feel you might be outmatched against? Um, not really. It's not, Zerg can't really cheese that well, except for maybe against Protoss. Um, I mean, like ZBT, you, you just, you, I think you kind of have to be the better player to win a Zerg. Um, unless the Terran makes a really bad error. Alright, um, so coming into the event, I'm assuming you had some kind of expectations or goals in mind. Um, do those expectations sort of, do you have to adjust them once you see a bracket like that, where it's kind of a bracket of death? Um, personally, I wouldn't. Um, because I have really high expectations of myself when I'm well prepared. Um, I, I, I didn't feel very well prepared coming into this event. My ZVP is really, really weak. Um, and then I've just been so busy this past month. But um, I mean, I just joined Quantic like a week ago. Right. And it'd be cool to see everybody. So I kind of came, you know, just kind of hang out. So what were your expectations coming into it? Um, I, I wasn't expecting very much, to okay. be honest. Um, so I guess um, after you were knocked out uh, by Titan, did you feel like you, sh you could have done better than that after you saw your loser bracket? Because it looked like... Um, you were doing pretty well through the loser's bracket until you ran into him. Um, I, I don't know. Um, Titan is actually really good late game uh, ZBZ, which is really rare. Um, and he's improved a lot since I last saw him. Um, I might have been able to play a, a little less sloppy, but I was pretty demotivated because White Raw was the next player, right. and I just played White Raw in Sunday Night Fights like two weeks ago, right. and he's I got playing, three would Playing so. really well right now. So. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, so I mean, I'm, I wasn't too bummed out getting knocked out by him, and he played really well too. So okay. Um, shifting off MLG a little bit, so streaming has obviously been incredibly important for you. It's basically enabled you to, to do StarCraft II full time. Mm -hmm. um, so, as somebody with a lot of experience in that area, um, how do you see that really changing the future of StarCraft and esports in general in, in regards to tournaments, player streams, uh, shows, things like that? How has it really impacted uh, the scene and the players? I think streaming has kind of taken on like its whole other subsection in the community. Like streaming used to be kind of like just like an extra thing, like oh hey, like here's this pro that we know from tournaments and from. You know, that plays really well, and he also has a stream. Whereas now the streaming community is kind of developing on his own. Um, some players that might not otherwise be known, um, I mean, I'm a good example, because my tourney showings haven't been, you know, very well at all. Um, or, and then there are other players, too, like um, Dragon. Slayer's Dragon is really entertaining. Um, hasn't necessarily had the greatest tourney showings. Um, and then there are other players, like even even players that do well in tourneys, like White Raw. Like his right. stream is just, you know, it's really fun to watch. So, I mean, I think it's kind of taken on a life of its own. Okay. Um, talking more about streaming here. There's been a lot of talk uh, recently, especially with Sundance kind of hinting at it on Twitter, about uh, the possibility of StarCraft on television uh, in the U.S. So others have kind of argued that with the way the scenes develop, that's not really necessary anymore because of services like Twitch and things like that. So do you have any thoughts on that whole debate back and forth? Um, I'm not in a great position to make comments on that. The, my, my two primary concerns as an outsider would be, one, everybody that's savvy enough to watch StarCraft is probably going to have a computer with a high-speed internet connection. I don't know any friends that are big into StarCraft that are still on dial-up. Um, and two, anybody that's not already watching it, I don't think will be interested in it. Um, I can't see like the general TV view returning on ESPN seeing StarCraft 2 and then being like, oh, I'm going to watch this because it looks really interesting. I, I don't really think it's got a place on TV, so okay. to speak. Um, so, still with your stream here, you've been a little bit more serious on your stream as of late compared to the way you've kind of been uh, months ago. Um, and you've actually cut back a little bit, it seems like, on the stream. Um, is that mostly just due to you've been busy, or is that more where um, um, you're kind of taking a different approach? Just a combination of things. Um, NA Ladder's been really bad. Um, right. Back back when I first started to play StarCraft 2, all of the bad people that were like just dumb and like BM and 
like would harass you were all in like silver league and gold league, but now those people are all like good enough to snipe <laughs> me, and it's really annoying. So right. I had to stop playing any ladder. Now I'm on EU ladder. Um, I had I, I moved in real life, and I mean, there's just been a lot of stuff going on. Um, I'm expecting to accomplish a lot in the next couple of months, though. Now that I'm on Guanac and I have access to good players to practice with, and I'll actually get some structured stuff going on with that. Okay, so um, also I guess you could say that with you being on Quantic now, um, has your approach really to training and streaming as well really changed uh, as you become more serious about becoming a top level player and not just somebody who's known for being an entertainer streamer? Um, I've always known how you should practice well, um, I just haven't done it before. So m my approach I, I guess will appear a lot different, but it's something that I've always wanted to do, um, which is really structured. like sitting down with somebody and being like, I'm really bad against this, do this to me until I don't lose to it anymore. Right. Um, and that's what I really am looking forward to do over the next month or two before the next MLG. Okay. Um, if anybody's watched your stream, they know that you're very outspoken about certain things. You're, uh, you can be controversial at times. So when the whole thing with Root and Complexity happened, uh, it did take you quite some time to find a new team. So how did you end up at Quantic and uh, what really about them specifically made it a good fit for you? Um, Mark is like the coolest dude in the world. He's, just, he's, he's really funny. He's really... Um, he, he seems almost too into it sometimes, like maybe not as detached as you might expect a manager to be. Um, and he also had some really cool announcements, and he seemed like his vision for where he wanted the team to go really lined up with my vision. Um, when Mark originally approached me maybe a month ago, um, he was really looking at me as kind of the entertaining kind of thing. Um, and I've been trying to veer away from that and trying to play more seriously. And after approaching me recently, and talking to me a little bit about the plans for the team and everything, it really seemed like the team was headed in a direction that was more fitting for where I wanted to come. All right. Um, should we still expect then the same unfiltered, controversial uh, Stephen we've all come to know? Um, yeah, definitely. I'm, I, I consider myself to be entertaining, but I don't try to entertain. I'm not an entertainer. Right. I try to play first, and whatever happens as a result of that happens. Okay, so uh, in that regard, now that you're on a team, um, how does that really impact sponsor relations with you? Because obviously there's certain things that certain sponsors might not necessarily agree with that you might say. Um, for talking to Mark, it seems like my stream, for the most part, um, shouldn't be touched or shouldn't be messed with. Um, in terms of like live events or something, I mean, I'm a pretty smart person. Right. I mean, we've all been to high school where you have to meet your girlfriend's parents, and you, you know, you, I mean, it's just common sense. I'm not going to be crazy while I'm representing the team right. or anything. So. Okay. So, um, speak about more about your team. Uh, Quantic, you now have yourself, you have Inca, you have Sase, a bunch of other really good players. Um, so obviously you've had strong practice partners, not while you were teamless, but uh, have you already seen really noticeable improvements now that you've had those players around you, or uh, do you really think that's going to come in like the months ahead of time as you go? Um, it, it'll come, hopefully Hopefully, I'll see an improvement within like a week or two, but um, I've only been on the team for like a week and everybody's been scheduling stuff you know, okay. recently, so I really haven't had that much of a chance to sit down and practice with them yet. All right, so you were also at the Red Bull LAN recently uh, with a bunch of really top-level players. Uh, talk a little about that experience and uh, how it really helped your game, or at least your mentality toward training. Um, going into it, I wish I could have been more prepared going into it, but the recent patch had just completely annihilated my Zergris Protoss. Like, I had to start back at complete right. scrub tier and kind of work my way up. So it was really cool getting to talk to um, Slush a lot and read a little bit about what they do ZVP and read a little bit about how he opens ZVT. So hopefully, as my ZVP starts to develop, it, it kind of stems from a lot of the stuff I picked up at the Red Bull Lane. So uh, talking about your uh, your ZVT a little bit, and actually just you know Zerg in general, um, when the patch first came out, you obviously were pretty upset because you were obviously an investor heavy player. Um, now that you've had some time to really step back and look at it, have your thoughts on the patch changed at all? The nerf or anything like that? Um, no, I just still think a lot of people are just really lazy. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, in the long run, though, do you think that that actually could end up helping your play because you've kind of had to adjust and learn different strategies, learn different builds, things like that? I mean, in some ways, I guess. Depends on how you look at help. I mean, if you remove Roaches from the game, well, obviously right. Zergs would have to play a lot differently, and you could argue that that helps them because they have to improvise more. But I mean, I wouldn't say that nerfing a unit out of existence and then forcing you to do something else makes you a more diverse player. I don't know, that's kind of a weird way to look at it. I guess a uh, better way to word that would be, um, it might not make you a better player as far as results. It forces me to learn other it, things. It forces you to learn yeah, other yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, okay. definitely. Um, so back to Quantic a little bit. Um, obviously, you guys have a presence in Korea now with Sase. Um, you previously discussed a possible trip to Korea just to train and practice things like that. Is that still something you'd like to do at some point? And is that something that's uh, feasible with Quantic that you'd like to pursue? Um, yeah, and that whole area is is kind of gray right now. But after BlizzCon, um, a lot of that will be more clear about what's going on. Okay. Um, speaking about after BlizzCon, you guys have been kind of hyping up a, a big announcement. Any kind of hints you can drop on that or anything? Um, the the announcement was enough to instantly make me say yes to join the team. That's okay. what I'll say. That's a, that's a pretty big announcement. You've been kind of on and off the big events recently. Um, I guess that has a lot to do with, first of all, not having a team and, and being uh, being busy as well in the last month. Um, with now you on Quantic, are you expecting to show up at pretty much all the big events that we have in North America? Definitely. Especially after this coming month, yeah. 
Okay. Um, this is your chance now to plug sponsors, any shout-outs, anything like that. So go ahead. Um, I'm going to thank Quanta Gaming for having me. Um, Axel Toss is a cool guy on Quantic who's been walking me around and stuff. He's kind of like my personal bodyguard. He's pretty cool. And um, I want to thank everybody that watches me and supports me. Um, I really appreciate it. And I want to thank Cloud9 Labs for being absolutely amazing with uh, helping me with my website. All right. Thank you. Cool. Thank you.